the NFL Draft Combine always sees some players who end up boosting their draft stock and some who do the opposite. There are always a handful of players that make themselves more sought after after a strong showing. It is a great chance to get to see a player's full athleticism on display and get some answers to questions that we had coming into the week. One of the players who really impressed in Indy this week was Kentucky linebacker Trevin Wallace, a player who I thought tested really well and I think he has some serious upside at the linebacker position. What separates him from other players in this class? That is something that we will be talking about in today's video. But hey guys, if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment and let me know which players you guys would like to see me talk about and check out the playlist on the channel as we have done over a hundred of these prospect spotlights through this draft cycle. So leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and without further ado, let's get into it. Admittedly, Wallace was not a guy who I had very high on my list. I had seen him go as high as the first round in a mock on NFL.com, but he was never a guy who I fully expected to shine. But he has shown some really nice production for Kentucky over the last two years. In 2022, Wallace finished with 54 total tackles, 2.5 sacks, and 2 interceptions on the season. His 2023 season, though, is what really stood out. He had 80 total tackles, 5.5 sacks, 1 forced fumble, and 1 interception. After a solid senior bowl and a very strong showing at the Combine, some people have thrown Wallace up as a potential number one linebacker in the class. Some may say Wallace is undersized, but I don't buy it. I think Wallace has a very stocky build at the linebacker position, and I am a fan of his size. He is 6 foot 1, 244 pounds, he is tall, and he has the ideal weight for a linebacker. The term undersized linebacker just doesn't mean anything to me anymore, because I don't think it exists. Wallace has great length at the position as well. He has a near 80 inch wingspan and he has some really great size at the linebacker position. Wallace is a very fluid mover. He is flexible, has fluid hips, and he has the ability to match up down the field with running backs or tight ends, which are all things that we love to see for linebackers. His coverage abilities are some of my favorite parts about his game. He is very good at matching up in man coverage as he has the speed to play down the field. He ran a 4-5-1 40-yard dash, which was one of the fastest times for the linebacker position at the combine, but he also has some really good instincts in zone coverage, and he closes very quickly. I love what he offers in coverage, and athletically at the position. On tape at times, he isn't the most explosive, I will admit it, but his combine numbers give me a lot of hope that he can change that at the next level because he has the athleticism and the fluidity in terms of his movement. Wallace is also a strong tackler. His missed tackles increased a little bit in 2023 as he had 10, but over the last 3 years, Wallace has only produced 18 missed tackles. He takes good angles and does a really good job at wrapping up in space. The two biggest areas of concern are Wallace's abilities as a blitzer and as a run defender. He really struggles to trigger downhill at times. He doesn't have great play recognition against the run and he does not do a great job of attacking and splitting the gap. On top of that, he was very poor at disengaging with blockers. He had some poor play strength and he doesn't play with a ton of power. I really would like to see Wallace improve against the run because athletically he has the quickness to do so, but it never seemed like he was consistently able to crash the run and make a play. The other area of Wallace's game that I don't love is his ability in play action. Sometimes he plays a little too aggressively trying to come down and defend the run, but it then leaves him open in the middle of the field and it allows plays over the middle. I would like to see Wallace be a little bit more disciplined when defending against play action. Trevin Wallace is moving up boards after a strong combine. He showed some really good traits in a loaded SEC, and I think he has some really high potential. He is my number 6 linebacker in the class. I have some concerns, and I think this is a linebacker class with some great talent up at the top. He is my number 105 player in the draft. 
Trevin Wallace, to me, would work best as a middle linebacker in a 4-3 defense. This allows him to roam the middle of the field, play that zone coverage role that he did so well at Kentucky, and he may be asked to pick up tight ends or running backs in one-on-one -on -one coverage. This is where Kentucky played him a lot in their scheme, and I think that's where he's going to translate best at the next level. My player comparison for Trevin Wallace is Baltimore Ravens free agent linebacker Patrick Queen. Athletically and size-wise, they are extremely comparable. They both had issues against the run at times and block shedding, but on top of that, they are both excellent linebackers in coverage. Queen is coming off an incredible season for the Ravens, and I think Wallace has the upside to be a really good linebacker if he is put in the right situation. Trevin Wallace is a terrific linebacker prospect. He has the size, speed, and the coverage abilities that are heavily sought after at the NFL level. He needs to improve in run defense, but I think he has serious upside, and overall, I think Trevin Wallace will be a third round pick in the 2024 NFL Draft.